So, despite the revolution, cold hard cash remains the most widely used form of payment in every region, in every corner of the world. Let that sink in, it's huge. With cash still so unbelievably prominent, a massive opportunity awaits for digital payments to continue to innovate and to grow. Our next speaker, Caesar Sengupta, is Google's general manager of payments and the head of the Next Billion Users Initiative. He runs the product and engineering teams for Google Pay and Tez and holds a staggering 15 patents in operating systems designs and expert finding systems. In short, he knows his stuff. He is responsible for Google's product strategy for high user growth in countries like Indonesia, India, Brazil and Nigeria. His team is not only building a new set of products for these countries, but also working with other teams to improve existing products with low bandwidth and offline modes. In this presentation, Caesar takes learnings from these high growth markets to dissect where the proliferation of mobile phones has introduced new use cases and allowed payments innovation to leapfrog the more advanced economies, the world beyond cash. Up there with his revolutionary namesake, please help me welcome Caesar Serengupta. Thanks. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sia Sengupta, and I lead, the Google, lead Google's efforts in payments and for our next billion users. I've been in this payments role for about a quarter now and wanted to take this opportunity to address a couple of questions that many of you have brought up. So today, I'd like to talk to you about, one, why does Google care so much about mobile payments? Two, where does Google fit into this overall money ecosystem? And then I have a set of topics that I would like to start a conversation with you all on. But before I get into that, let me start by acknowledging what an exciting time it is to be part of the payments world right now. There are a few major changes that are going on that will shape the world of money for the next several decades to come. Mobile computing is changing pretty much every aspect of our life, and the world of money is going to be no different, especially when it comes to new users of the internet either the next generation in the US or Europe, or pretty much most of the users in the rest of the world. Mobile phones are not only going to be the first experience they have of the digital world, it's often going to be the only way they get online or do anything digital. Offline and online, especially when it comes to commerce, are also merging. And the lines between what is physical and what is online retail is blurring. Many online majors are setting up offline stores, and offline businesses are moving on online rapidly. In countries where the majority of people are coming online for the first time, this is happening at an even more rapid pace. Take Indonesia, for example. Gojek, which started as a ride-sharing company over the last couple of years, has built a food delivery service that is at such phenomenal scale that many home kitchens across Indonesia now have effectively function as online restaurants. DoorDash and a number of other players are doing similar stuff in the US and the rest of the world. And this merging of online and offline will happen globally and will happen across verticals. Finally, many economies around the world are leapfrogging straight from cash to mobile money. We've seen this happen in China. And we're seeing this happen in India right in front of our eyes. And for what it's worth, even the US, while largely cashless in many ways, has still got a long way to go before we fully embrace digital and mobile payments. But this will happen in the US and globally over the next few years. So with that background in mind, let's tackle the first question. Why do we at Google care so much about payments? Again, the answer starts with mobile phones. Today, there are over a billion Google users across iOS and Android. And in fact, there are over two billion monthly active phones on, on the Android platform globally. And these phones are not just being used by consumers, but they're being used by merchants and workers around the world. And of course, they use these phones to search and to entertain themselves, but they also use these phones to interact with the world of commerce paying for things, receiving money, buying and selling things. 
And while we've done a lot of work to make payments simpler and more secure, there's still a ton more to do. Being online and offline using your phone is still too cumbersome, still too insecure, and just plain impossible in many parts of the world. So we have a lot of work to do as the stewards of the Android ecosystem to make payments online and offline easier, faster, and more secure. And we need to go beyond the payment basics and do a lot more to help people with stuff like loyalty cards or transit or just plain simple things like paying bills. And if we do our job well, then we'll see people transact more online and the entire ecosystem will grow. That's why we care so much about mobile payments. With that, let's talk about the second question. So where does Google fit into this broad ecosystem of money? And to illustrate this point, I will use the case study of what we've been doing in India for the last year or so. In the US, we built Google Pay based on the credit card infrastructure. But very few Indians have credit cards. So in India, we approach the problem differently. We found a government eager for digital payments, a strong banking system, and a new but very interesting payment infrastructure being set up by the banks and the government called the Unified Payment Interface, or UPI. UPI, which was created and is managed by the National Payments Corporation of India, enables money to move directly between bank accounts in real time. So the money hits your account immediately. It's optimized for mobile usage. It's an open and standards-based interoperable network, so pretty much anyone can participate and innovate on top of it. So we took a big bet on this new payment network and built a version of Google Pay specially for India. This used to be called Taze. We've now rebranded it to Google Pay. This product had a very different user interface built around conversations. It enables users to transact directly from their bank accounts and makes paying someone as simple as handing over cash, whether that's online or offline, at large retailers or small merchants. We launched about a year back, September 2017, and the momentum has been strong from the start. In just over a year, Google Pay in India today has over 30 million monthly actives and has enabled, collectively, over a billion transactions. And today it's running at an analyzed run rate of over $40 billion in transaction value. And while we're very happy with the progress we've had so far, what we're even more excited about is the impact Google Pay has had on the overall ecosystem, and especially on UPI. Since the launch of Google Pay, India's monthly UPI transactions have grown 18x, 18 times, to 312 million in August, in just one month alone. To contextualize this impact, UPI transactions have in the past year surpassed credit cards that have been around in India for the last 20 or 30 years. This has made India one of the world's leading innovators in digital payments. And since our launch, many other major players, domestic as well as international, have joined the UPI network, further strengthening the ecosystem. And many other countries now, globally, are looking at similar infrastructures to help power their transition from cash to mobile money. You know, many factors led to Google Pay's start or strong start in India, but I wanted to call out a few key decisions that highlight the approach that we hope to take to the rest of the world. First, we worked very closely with the ecosystem in India and with key partner banks in the country. This started with payments. Google Pay works with any bank on UPI in India, but we went further to integrate with multiple payment service providers. This created greater resilience, redundancy, and better performance and more choice for users. We have since extended this partnership with banks to expand financial inclusion and are working with them to make the loans process to their customers simpler, quicker, and more direct. Later this month, our partner banks will start offering pre-approved instant loans to their customers within Google Pay without needing any additional documents and in a matter of seconds. Second, the Indian government and the financial industry built an open system with powerful APIs that enabled consumer and deep tech innovation on top of the infrastructure. And we worked 
closely with the government and the regulators, and we're happy to play a part in both scaling that system as well as ensuring that we were adding overall value to the solution in India. Third, we looked very closely at how users and merchants were transacting and have done our best to apply deep technology to make not just the payment experience, but the overall engagement between consumers and merchants safer, faster, and richer. To us, this best represents where we believe Google fits in. We want to bring our understanding of user experience, our ability to make complex systems simpler, faster, and more secure using technology to our partners, to the ecosystem. We aspire to be the technology and the consumer experience partner to financial institutions and governments around the world. And we would like to work closely with all of you to take the world from cash to mobile money. So where do we go from here? I have several open questions for you. And you know, we don't have all the answers, but we're eagerly looking forward to working with all of you to craft the solutions to these challenges. For the users, how do we get users comfortable with using their phones for all things financial? This, of course, means making the user experience simpler, but it also means making it more secure so people know that they're in control. We also need to make our services more inclusive so that they're truly available to everyone around the world. For merchants, how do we help retailers online and offline compete and stay relevant in this dynamic and hyper-competitive world? For content creators, how do we enable and encourage them to take and raise money, whether it's dollars or even cents? How do we enable microtransactions that are low cost, instant, and a viable business model for the internet? And for the industry, how do we together as an ecosystem design the right technical and business fabric to enable governments and countries to make the move from cash to mobile money? Again, I don't have all the answers to these questions, but we are looking forward to working with you to come up with the solutions. Finally, I'd like to close by reiterating what an exciting time it is to be in this space. We've collectively built a great base, but there's still so many challenges to overcome, and the opportunity ahead is huge. So my message to you today is simple. Whether you're a financial institution, a bank, or a country, come talk to us. We want to partner with you and help bring the power of mobile money to everyone. Thank you so much.